Welcome, everybody. Dear colleagues, uh, welcome to the first webinar done within the, within the international project Future Environmentalist, linking EU natural capital management to field research, financed by Erasmus Plus program of the European Union under the Erasmus um, uh, under the key action to cooperation for innovation and the exchange of good practices. This project is implemented in three countries, Bulgaria, Czech Republic and Greece, in partnership between two Bulgarian angels, Association of Parks in Bulgaria and Bi Bulgarian Biodiversity Foundation, and two universities, Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, Greece, and Czech University of Life Science in Prague. The activities of the project target students and young professionals from the three countries and consist of intensive education program, career forums, and online education toolkit, a website where training materials will be published. Webinars, as the current one, as are part of the education program that will also consist of face-to-face -face lectures and field work. Webinars will be done in English and are open to all interested students, practitioners, and wide public. So thank you very much for your attendance and for joining our webinar. Uh, if you want to get informed about next webinars, you can write to us in the chat room of the webinars so that we include your email and write to you. Now I leave you in the hands of uh, Katrin Tomova from Bulgarian Biodiversity Foundation, who will present to us the, bon the modern biosphere reserves and the advantages that they give in nature conservation. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining today's webinar. My name is uh, Katrin Tomova and uh, today I'm going to talk to you about biosphere reserves and how we can use them as a tool for sustainable development. I would like to ask everyone to mute themselves and in case you have any questions, feel free to share them in the chat and we will have some time at the end where you can, where we will address all your questions. Um, just want to remind you that the um, webinar will be recorded and will be available after the end. So, um, just so you know. Okay, my name is uh, Katrin Tomova. I am part of Bulgarian Biodiversity Foundation and have been working on the topic of biosphere reserves for the past five years. But let's start first by saying what a biosphere reserve is. The biosphere reserves. The uh, are areas comprising terrestrial marine and coastal ecosystems. They're part of the UNESCO Man and Biosphere Program, or the so-called MAP program, which started as an intergovernmental scientific program. The main idea at first, when it started in the 70s, was to um, establish a scientific basis for the improvement of relationships between people and their environments. However, with time, uh, the concept of biosphere reserve has evolved. And in 1995, the civil strategy was adopted. It was adopted because it was understood by the international conservation community. There are many questions that the um, uh, communities are facing today. First of all, um, the fact that we need to reconcile the conservation of biodiversity, the quest for economic and social development, and the maintenance of associated cultural values. And the answer to all that here to be biosphere reserves. Why? Because they are indeed areas of terrestrial and coastal marine ecosystems. They're also internationally recognized under the UNESCO MAP program. So they could also be used as practical examples of um, territories where sustainable development can be used. Today, the biosphere reserves um, remain um, areas which are designed under the MAP program but they also serve as places where we can test different approaches for integrated management, which must include all interested parties within the territory, and also protected areas that are meant to demonstrate a balanced relationship between humans and nature. What does that mean? And what is the network of biosphere reserves? The network of biosphere reserve is uh, composed of more than 600 biosphere reserves, to be precise, 686. 
which is quite a big number, but when you think about how big the world is, it's not that big. So they are really unique and special places which are designed and uh, designated under the, the MAP program. They are currently located in more than 122 countries, including 20 transboundary biosphere reserves. This network um, is aiming at mostly fostering this harmonious integration of people and nature for sustainable development. But how does it work? How are biosphere reserves uh, declared? Well, there is a, a complex uh, process uh, which aims to declare the biosphere reserves. First of all, uh, they need to be uh, designated for the inclusion within the network. Uh, and uh, this is happening through states, which through their national map committee, uh, forward and prepare the nominations, which are then sent to the secretariat after reviewing uh, the potential sites. The secretariat is looking and verifying all the documents, looking at the maps, the um, um, the rationale behind all these nominations, all the supporting documents, and makes the decision. Once the decision is made, the Director General of uh, UNESCO notifies uh, the state concerning of their decision, and then um, the Biosphere Reserve receives this official statement that it has been designed for inclusion in the World Network of Biosphere Reserves. So if we look at the biosphere reserves around the world, or the BRs, as I will be calling them for, for short, um, I want to, to share with you some of the examples for, of the, for some of the partner countries. So I will talk to you a little bit about um, Greece, Czech Republic, Bulgaria, but I also share some examples from uh, around the world. If we look into Greece, uh, there are two biosphere reserves which are uh, Mount Olympus, declared in 1981, and um, the other one, which is the, the Gorge of Samaria. They are both declared in the 1981 and are currently used as uh, examples of uh, this harmonious relationship between men and nature. But I'm sure you, uh, some of the Greek participants would, would definitely know more about them. If we look into the Czech Republic, there are six biosphere reserves currently. Um, they were declared in the 1970s, some of them, some of them in the 1990s, and some of them have been extended in 2003. You can see them listed here, and I will share some more information about one of them uh, later on. Now let's look at Bulgaria. Bulgaria started with 17 biosphere reserves in the 1970s. Their status was strictly protected area or reserves according to uh, IOC and category 1A. So they only had a core zone and a buffer zone. What happened later on is the fact that um, in 2017, Bulgaria had to withdraw four of its existing biosphere reserves because they were not consistent with the current policies and recommendations by the UNESCO, meaning that there were no people with them. They were just protected areas. We also asked for extension of the deadline for another six biosphere reserves, and we also managed to declare four new biosphere reserves. So this is just an example to show you that this network of biosphere reserves is something very dynamic and it's not to be um, only available on paper. The main idea of those territories is to really help them foster the development of the region. And if this is not happening, then they shouldn't be included in the list of, um, of the MAP program. So as of today, Bulgaria has 10 biosphere reserves in total, but um, only four of them are um, with um, the different uh, zonations, which includes um, inhabitants, and uh, the so-called transition zone, which I will tell you more in a second. And there is the second. So um, talking about the zonation, it's very important to understand that when the um, program first started, there was only uh, focus on uh, the so-called core area. Now the focus is remaining on the core area, but there is also the so-called buffer zone and the transition zone. There is a certain flexibility which countries have uh, with regards to the definition of their zones, but they all need to ensure that um, they are 
effectively combine conservation, sustainable use of resources, and knowledge generation through, the through this integrated zonation and uh, integrated management. So all biosphere reserves need to have those three zones, core zone, buffer zone, and the transition area. What does that mean? It means that there are different functions of all these different zones and different importance, but they're all interconnected and work together in order to present an example of um, the sustainable biosphere reserve. Let me show you a little bit more about the um, zonation using the example of one of the Bulgarian biosphere reserves, uh, Central Balkan. On the map here, you can see that it's quite a big territory. And in red, you can see the core zone. The core zone um, is strictly protected ecosystem, which contributes to the conservation of landscape, ecosystem, species, and genetic variation. And the Bulgarian national legislation, did would, this would be the so-called reserves or the strictly protected area. Then the yellow zone is the so-called buffer zone, which is usually surrounding the core area and it's used for activities which are compatible with um, sound ecological practices that can reinforce the scientific research, monitoring, training and education. So it's not just used for monitoring, but also for education and for scientific activities. And then we have the transition area. You can see that it's quite big. That's the green area and it's compromising of um, six different municipalities and their entire territory. This is part of the reserve where the greatest activity is allowed. So this is where all the settlements are. This is where the different agricultural activities are taking place in terms of farming, but there's also a lot of grazing areas in the buffer zone. So they work together, the buffer zone and the transition zone. For example, the farmers could be doing their grazing into the buffer zone but have their farm located into the transition area and they could be producing the cheese into the transition area. This is um, the transition area or the so-called area for development is where the economic and human development is to be fostered but it also needs to be in line with the concept of the biosphere reserves and has to be socially, culturally and ecologically sustainable. What you might see in this example is that there are some white spots uh, in the middle of the biosphere reserve. This is actually one municipality who decided not to participate at this stage because they were worried that there might be some additional legislative uh, restrictions coming from UNESCO. But obviously this is not the case because the biosphere reserves are um, um, found on the existing legislation in the country. So they're not creating any new restrictions on, or any new laws. They're just um, used as a framework for integrated management and sustainable development. Now, a couple of words about what biosphere reserves are. As I mentioned, they're not, they're not a new type of protected area, but they rely on the already existing regulations. They should be used as a framework for integrated management. And there are a lot more than just protected areas. This was the main idea of the Seville strategy, to move forward from strictly protected area and develop real sites of excellence where sustainable development is done in practice. There are now learning sites. There are also research sites for scientific works. But there are also sites for culture and folklore. There are also biodiversity hotspots because we already mentioned that there are unique terrestrial, marine, or coastal ecosystems. They are rich in traditions and they combine great um, conditions for sustainable farming. There are also sites for gastronomy and food with some local products. There are sites of unique nature. They're also great for recreation activities and all sorts of tourism, but provide uh, opportunities for combination of unique economies and provide opportunities for development of local products. They're rich in historical sites and they're sites for joint projects. Or in one word, biosphere reserves are not one, but several words. They're sites for the harmonized coexistence between people and nature. 
it might sound a little bit too vague, but in fact, this is the whole idea of the MAP program and the biosphere reserves. Now, the main fu functions of all biosphere reserves are three, conservation, development, and logistic support. We've already mentioned conservation. This is um, a function which is fo focusing on genetic resources, endemic species, ecosystems, and landscape. Then development, we also talked about that, promoting economic and human growth that is sustainable on a social, cultural, and ecological level. It is structured around production activities that are subject to applicable national laws and the goals of the reserves in order to ensure and strengthen the three pillars of sustainable development, social, economic, and protection of the environment. And then we have logistic support. Logistic support is the one that is focusing on promoting research activities, environmental education, training, monitoring, all in the context of the local, national, and international conservation and sustainable development. Important to mention about those functions is that having this huge network of biosphere reserves is also a great opportunity for all those experts working within biosphere reserves to share best, best practices and um, exchange knowledge while working and focusing on all those three functions, conservation, development, and logistics support. A little bit more about the main character, characteristics of, uh, of BRs. Now, the first and most important part is that they all need to achieve the three interconnected functions that we already talked about but they also need to focus on multi-stakeholder approach with particular emphasis on the involvement of local communities in management. We're talking about bottom-up approach here, where local communities are developing and designing their own integrated management policies. And they're also fostering dialogue for conflict resolution of natural resource use or just for better management of the territory. Integrating cultural and biological diversity, especially the role of traditional knowledge in ecosystem management is also something very important for BRs. Demonstrating sound sustainable development practices and policies based on research and monitoring. So not just thinking that something might be good because it sounds sustainable, but also using research and monitoring to justify it and um, make science-based decisions on uh, the development of the territory. Acting as sites of excellence for education and training, and obviously participating in this world network of biosphere reserves. Why are they important? As I mentioned already, the, the establishment under the, the, the civil strategy, for example, of Central Balkan, is giving an opportunity to further co cont contribute to the much closer involvement of the local administration in the planning and sustainable management of their natural capital. So biosphere reserves are actually giving this opportunity, they're empowering local people to have a voice and say how they want to develop uh, further their territory. And they also provide further stimuli for economic and social culture development, not only for the local people, but of the region as a whole, because very often when we have one municipality working right next to another one, they're not communicating. And this is what biosphere reserves are offering. They're offering this, uh, this opportunity for dialogue. Why do we need to support biosphere reserves? Why are they important? Here are some examples why biosphere reserves needs to be supported. First of all, because they show us how to balance nature conservation with economic development. They also help to deliver ecosystem services, such as providing clean drinking water or maintaining a stable microclimate for agriculture. They protect cultural diversity by supporting local and indigenous forms of production and consumption. They will allow us to study those ecosystems and look at how they work in a protected environment, but also how they um, collaborate and how they work with the territories surrounding them. They teach us how human intervention affects those ecosystems and habitats and vice versa. They can co contribute to peace building, especially across borders. There are several examples of territories where there were some conflicts. And thanks to the Biosphere Reserve Framework, people were able to communicate and build dialogue and decide how to develop their territory in a more sustainable way. They also suggest themselves as areas to practice organic agriculture and economically adapted forest management. They are 
ecological, ecological connection areas that, that are important for biodiversity in the landscape. They also link cultural and biological diversity for the benefit of nature and people. And they serve as a learning ground for regional, national and international exchange to promote sustainable development. Although I said this last, I think that this is the most important um, part surrounding the Biosphere Reserve Network. As I said already, there are many experts working in Biosphere Reserves and having the chance to communicate through this network is a really valuable uh, opportunity. Now, why are Biosphere Reserves so interesting to, to study and, and work and talk about? Because much and much we're talking about sight feeling, not only sightseeing, and people are looking for different opportunities for traveling, for different opportunities for engaging within local communities, and local communities want to offer something extra, not just sightseeing. And this is what the MAP program is focusing on. The mission of the MAP program for 15, 2025, is to develop and strengthen models for sustainable development in the world network of biosphere reserves. Also to communicate the experience and lessons learned, to support the evaluation and high quality management strategies and policies for sustainable development and planning, and help member states and stakeholders to urgently meet the sustainable development goals through experiences from the world network of biosphere reserves particularly through exploring and testing policies, technologies, and innovations for the sustainable management of biodiversity and natural resources in mitigation and adaptation to climate change. Again, talking about the network, those are territories that are sharing similar, uh, similar problems. They're facing similar situations. In using this as, um, as a uh, communication platform, the, the Network of Biosphere Deserve Reserves is offering all those experts the opportunity to exchange practices and helping them to, to develop strategies and policies for um, the sustainable development goals that we all need to focus on. Now, I want to share with you a short video about one biosphere reserves. I hope that you all will be able to hear the um, um, voice here. So let me know if that's not the case. Hola, soy la Joana y dirigeixo la Reserva de Biosfera del Montseny. Aquest any estem molt contents perquè fem 40 anys. La reserva de la biosfera és molt important perquè posa també en valor a la, a les població, la població local i també li dona feina, és a dir, que dinamitza determinades economies i eh, té una fracció de població important. L'Associació de Propietaris de Montseny estem plenament implicats en el projecte que lidera la reserva de la biosfera de Montseny, que pretén analitzar una mica quins reptes i oportunitats ens aporta el canvi climàtic. Què hem de fer perquè mitigar els problemes que ens pot aportar? Possiblement requereix una diferent forma de gestionar doncs, els boscos. La meva reserva de la biosfera està orgullosa de compartir. Now, this is just one short video that was developed by the Mount Sunny Biosphere Reserve. And it's part of the, um, the um, communication strategy that the MAP program is, is having currently, is to share different success stories using the hashtag proud to share And uh, today I'm going to also share some good examples from different biosphere reserves. I'm going to start with um, an example from Germany, which um, is used very often when talking about biosphere reserves. And um, the reason is that um, it is uh, situated in two, three federal states uh, in Germany, Bavaria, Hesse, which was formerly in West Germany, and Thuringia, which was formerly in East Germany. So this is an example of the unification of East and West Germany. And it was once a hotspot of Cold War confrontation, However, after the, the fall of the Berlin Wall, um, just two years after East and West Germany were reunited, the Biosphere Reserve was um, developed and um, um, designated. This happened in 1991. 
And now those three state administrations are running the Biosphere Reserve and they're all focusing on different aspects, but together have developed um, a success uh, story and uh, a role model for, for Biosphere Reserve. How did it all happen? Well, it happened with, um, with the sheep. So you wouldn't say that this is something extremely unique. However, looking back, um, one of the first uh, truly exemplary schemes for marketing local products in the Biosphere Reserve has been the Ron Sheep project. You can see here on the right hand side, this specific breed of the local Ryon sheep uh, with, um, with the black head. And the story goes like this. In the past, there were hundreds of thousands of sheep which were grazing, freely grazing in the, um, the, the region. However, there was the industrialization of farming and slowly and slowly the traditional sheep farming went into decline. Over the past 16 years, the Rion Biosphere Reserve has organized an extensive marketing campaign for the sheep. It was accompanied by a culinary event for gourmet and excursions for shepherds. It was um, a dialogue which was established with retailers and little by little, the stock of these sheep has grown to about 4,000 sheep today, and it has become the local mascot once more and is used as an advertising icon. Now, everywhere you go around these biosphere reserves, you see different souvenirs with sheep. If you go to a restaurant, you can be served a um, local traditional lamb. If you go to the hotel, your sheep will probably be with sheep. If you go to a restaurant, uh, there might be some small pillows with sheep or some small figures with sheep. You can buy sheep everywhere. There is also specific shows organized around the sheep. You can see here how they're um, cutting the, the, not cutting, I don't know what term in English, but you can see what they're doing. Um, um, shaving maybe is the word of the sheep. And um, there's also some uh, special tourist attractions where different um, sheep are gathering together and the farmer is telling them where to go and, and what to do. What is interesting here is that um, the locally produced farm are marked for their organic quality. Um, there's also a lot of different chain stores that are producing and um, selling sheep. There were also apples. In, uh, in Rion Biosphere Reserve. Again, something which is not extraordinary and is not something that no one has ever seen. Um, however, again, thanks to focused efforts related to marketing, they have managed to develop uh, a brand and they have managed to use the apples which were growing in, um, in an organic matter. However, they didn't have um, very good uh, look for the market so they have decided that they could uh, produce different sort of juices cider apple beer sparkling apple wine and everything else they have um, developed uh, an initiative an association for apple growers which began harvesting those apples from the traditional orchards meadows and they started marketing them for their organic quality the result to all this uh, was obviously economic development and there were many investors who decided to place their investment facilities, to place their production facilities, especially for apple juices or ciders in the biosphere reserves so that they can use the brand of the biosphere reserve. Moving on, um, there's another example from France. This is Seven Biosphere Reserve where I want to talk to you about the integrated management. So we talked about branding. Now I want to share an example of management. This is an example of a territory which was a big national park, uh, which in the 60s was focusing on conservation and biodiversity projects. However, with time, they have begun to expand its boundaries. They were transformed into a biosphere reserve and they started including a lot of their members, a lot of their different stakeholders, a lot of local people into the management process. And now the management body comp comprise of different stakeholders, they organize meetings, and this is an example of an integrated management, which is taking into account the, um, the voices of the local people. 
And on top of that, it has a great website where you can see how this is a, a success story and a real example of a biosphere reserve, which is offering tons of different types of activities. You can see them on the left-hand side. There's cycling, there's sightseeing, guest houses, um, tourism opportunities, as well as conservation, which remains focus of the national park. Now, the next example that I want to share is from the Czech Republic. This is the Krkonoše Biosphere Reserve. Um, sorry if I'm not pronouncing it correctly. And uh, it's again an example of uh, quite a big territory. It was actually the first transboundary biosphere reserve in the MAP program. It was declared in 1992 because of its unique biodiversity and also rich cultural heritage. There were over 30 museums within the territory of the BR. It has around 50,000 inhabitants. There are 26 cities and 18 villages. So you can imagine that it's quite a big territory. Again, you can see on the map that the core area here is the yellow, and then the buffer zone is the red. So there is a big core area. You can see that it's situated on the boundaries of Poland. So it is a transboundary biosphere reserve. And the transition zone is also quite big. There is a lot of hiking, biking, and ski tourism, and many more opportunities, including a lot of cultural heritage and um, gastronomy tourism. What is important here is the fact that they have recognized um, their vision is um, friendship between mountain and people. So for them, it's not just important to focus on the mountain, but also include the people and foster the economic uh, and social development of the region. Another example is from um, France and uh, Italy, which is uh, Monviso. This is an example of a joint initiative. Ciclo Monviso is a project um, which is aiming to involve the local cross-border communities. Every time we look at some cross-border or transboundary biosphere reserves, it's important to recognize the potential they have uh, with regards to um, building bridges for, for the local communities across the borders. And this is an example where through sustainable transport or through biking, the, pro the project was aiming at bringing those communities together. Um, the main idea was to create a cross-border bicycle touring circuit and the services related to it. So there were training for operators and management and information and promotion for the users. The general goal was build and integrate bicycle tourism offer in the cross-border area, which is capable of enhancing and promoting the local goods and resources. So promoting sustainable tourism, encouraging sustainable mobility, and creating economic opportunities for the local communities. Again, it was a project which was developed, you can see, in um, 2010 through 2012. And so far, it's been very successful and it's used as one of the good examples for such initiatives. The next example is coming from Italy. Italy has a lot of biosphere reserves and they are extremely active within the MAP network. This example that I want to share with you is coming from Apennino Tosquemiliano. This is um, a national park which was transformed into a biosphere reserve in June 2015. So quite a new biosphere reserve, but an old uh, national park. The interesting thing right here is that they have recognized the importance of having the UNESCO brand and having been recognized as a biosphere reserve, and they're using this quite extensively. How? If you go on their website, um, or if you go into any topics, any articles about biosphere reserves, I'm sure you will find something about Apennino Tosco Emiliano. They have really focused a lot on food. Um, it has, according to them, more than, 40, uh, more than 64 regional specialties. And um, the combination they have developed um, with regards to their local people their landscape and their food is very interesting. So they're really making this connection and talking about the fact that it's not just the landscape, it's not just the people, it's not just the food, it's a combination of all this. It's um, the extraordinary richness of these quality foods is well represented by the list of local products. As I've mentioned, more than 64 regional species. And um, what they did is an international seminar 
branding through high quality products and gastronomy. They organized it in a castle in 2016, and they also created a contest, um, zero kilometer menu. This is a project which involved many local restaurants and producers to promote the territory through high quality gastronomy. The idea was to use only local products in the local restaurants so that they can foster the agricultural development, help the local producers, and also use the existing opportunities they have within the biosphere reserve. This is a quote from, uh, from their branding strategy that I really like. Um, in the park, you can li literally taste the landscape. This is just to, to show you that um, having a territory and using the right words to promote it is, um, is very important. So using the, the UNESCO brand, but also using it in the right way, it's, um, it's very important because um, according to different surveys, about 75% of the people believe that UNESCO is important in promoting economical activities, but 52% will consider it a guarantee of quality, and 3% believe it's an element of excellence. This means that being recognized as a biosphere reserve by UNESCO gives you an immense opportunity to promote your territory, but you have to choose the right means to do it. So an example of that right means is um, again a Panino Tosco in Milano, which decided to focus not just about quality, but also about caring. There are many examples of the brand, like I mentioned the Rhön Biosphere Reserve in Germany with the apples, but what they did in, um, in Italy is I care a Panino brand, which is aiming to promote and make known in order to grow recognizability, attractiveness, and value of the products, but also the services of the territory itself. They want to take care of the environment, the territory, and other people. The brand I Care Apanino can be given to different private bodies that are interested in supporting activities of the biosphere reserve. Let's say you are a local producer, who wants to support the development of the biosphere reserve. So there are a number of different criteria which you need to be compliant with, and then you can receive this label, I care, a penino. This is a very interesting way of promoting and making the local people understand the importance of sharing and supporting um, the biosphere reserve. Another example is from France. Uh, when we talk about brands, we need to understand that the brands that the Biosphere Reserve develop is um, different in any area, but it, it can be used as an umbrella for many different brands. Um, the Biosphere Reserve can decide what kind of criteria they want. They want to say that, for example, it has to be organic or it doesn't have to be organic. It has to be fair trade or it has to be supporting the local economy. It has to be um, the um, protected geographic indication, or it could be something else, but it could be used as an umbrella for all those different brands and all those different local activities that are happening in the biosphere reserves. How to communicate this BR brand? Here's an extract from uh, the, um, the toolkit that was developed to help uh, local stakeholders and uh, BR experts on uh, promoting the, the biosphere reserve concept. So it's very important to, to listen to the people across the network. It's very important to not just um, decide what the framework should be, what the focus should be, but to uh, listen to what the people are saying because it's about the people, by the people, for the people. It's what connects people across the world, but it should be done in accordance to what the local people want and feel because it's a chance to connect culture, nature, and economy, understanding heritage, creating future, learn better solutions in practice, explore different ways of living, not only ways of conserving, shared values and language, and food by passion. So those are some of the key words and key concepts that the, um, the biosphere reserves are focusing on. And there are different ways to, to get involved and to, uh, learn more about the biosphere reserves or to 
to study them or to participate in different events and trainings that are being organized. Now, the first thing that I would suggest is just to go on the UNESCO map website and just start reading because I personally believe that the biosphere reserves are a very interesting topic and concept which combines different um, environmental, social, and development um, topics into one head and one umbrella. And it could be used as um, a different um, research topics for many different people and also practitioners. So go on the UNESCO map website and see what might be interesting for you. Get inspired by the good practices. There are a lot of good examples. I've shared with you a very few of those that are listed on the website. If you uh, browse, you can see a lot of different examples. The Biosphere Smart Initiative is the map that was developed and has um, a lot of different uh, ideas and experiences and best practices and lesson learned from around the globe, where you can click and see and learn a little bit more about them. Um, the examples. The main idea was obviously the concept and to promote um, those um, examples. Now, some more um, scientific and practical ways to get involved are related to the so called MAP Scientific Award. So, since uh, 1989, the MAP program has been providing young researchers each year with an award of up to 5,000 US dollars in support of their research on ecosystems, natural resources, and biodiversity. Obviously, it has to be related to a biosphere reserve, but um, it's a great opportunity for young researchers to, to focus their, their studies and to, to get support from the MAP program. Um, this is a way also for the program to invest in a new generation of scientists worldwide because they believe that well-trained and committed young people are key to addressing ecological and sustainability issues. In the last year, in July 2018, there were seven winners, and you can learn a lot more on the MAP Scientific Award website. Something else that's very interesting and tangible is um, the UNESCO Summer University. The UNESCO Summer University is an initiative which started four years ago. Uh, so far, there has been two summer schools in Greece and two summer schools in Italy. Last year, it was in Parnon area in Greece, uh, which is not a biosphere reserve, but it is currently developing um, its nomination form. And the main idea of the summer school was to get to know the area, learn more about its potential, and help the local people develop their nomination forms, which will be sent to UNESCO in order to be nominated and hopefully designated as a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve. The year before, it was in Italy, in um, Tepiora di Oposada Montalbo Biosphere Reserve, which was uh, declared as the Biosphere Reserve at the same year where the summer university was um, held. And the idea of the university was to come up with suggestions on how you, the summer school participants um, can give ideas on how they, the region can be promoted and developed um, further on. This year, the summer university will be held in Bulgaria, and we are happy to announce that um, the applications for um, the applications aren't still open until uh, May 20th. So there are still a couple more days for you to apply if you're interested. You can learn all about it on um, the link or if you just type in um, Google Summer University on Integrated Management, Sustainable Tourism and Promotion of Biosphere Reserves, you will see the link into the Eventora website and uh, you can see what are the different um, criteria and selection criteria for the different participants. What we are looking at are different practitioners young researchers which are somehow related to a biosphere reserve and um, local people from Bulgaria who might be interested and it might be beneficial for them. Uh, it will be held at the end of uh, July and uh, you're more than welcome to have a look at the website and if you think you comply with the different criteria that are listed there, feel free to apply. So with this, I want to finish with a small recap of a um, nice video 
made by UNESCO about biosphere reserves in a nutshell. And then I'll be open for questions. This is Julie. She likes to spend the holidays visiting her uncle George on his farm. She's heard that the entire region where her uncle lives has just been selected by UNESCO as a designated biosphere reserve. Julie isn't too sure about that. What exactly is a UNESCO biosphere reserve? Is it something like an Indian reservation? And will they be putting a fence around it? then she probably wouldn't be allowed to roam around the woods and fields anymore. And Uncle George might have to get rid of his tractor and use a carriage instead. Uncle George can put his niece's mind at rest. He explains that a biosphere reserve helps humans and the environment to get along better. And it does so without damaging the lovely landscape. It doesn't need fences just well-balanced interaction between humans and nature. Uncle George has also discovered some advantages for himself, such as opportunities to make his farm even more profitable, and this in ways that benefit nature and the region. For Uncle George, not much has changed, and Julie can continue to explore the woods and fields, but something is different. Julie is curious to find out what. The Biosphere Reserve now offers lots of new activities. Julie and other visitors can explore the area with a ranger or follow adventure trails to learn exciting facts about animals and plants. Of course, the local hotels, restaurants and tradespeople benefit from the visitors, so any doubts among the population are quickly dispelled. Many are seeing the advantages and forming corporations so that they can also participate actively in the development of the Biosphere Reserve. Julie thinks Biosphere Reserves are great and is almost a bit envious of her uncle because he gets to work where other people spend their holidays. And because businesses can develop so well in Biosphere Reserves, she might find a job there herself one day. Why not visit a biosphere reserve near you sometime? There are more of them than you think. Okay, well, that was all from me. And I thank you very much for your attention. And I will now open the chat box to see some questions. What are the differences between biosphere reserves and the reserves in the Bulgarian categories of protected areas? So as I mentioned already, the reserves according to the Bulgarian legislation are reserves and biosphere reserves, there is no such um, legal framework. There is no law which is uh, saying what a biosphere reserve is. This is just a concept made to promote the development of the region. So there is no legal framework for the biosphere reserve. Uh, as for the reserves in the Bulgarian categories of protected areas, there is uh, a lot of different regulations um, associated with them. And I think you can also feel free to unmute yourself at this point if you have any questions. But may please, one by one. Okay, chat can also work. We heard that biosphere reserves have different integrated functions, including nature conservation and economic development. What, according to you, is the main advantage of BRs? How do they help reaching the balance, which is something that we want in protected area management too? I think that the most important thing about biosphere reserves is that they create the possibility for um, integrated management and a joint dialogue between the different uh, stakeholders and they provide an opportunity for different um, local authorities, businesses, and uh, everyone who is interested to cooperate together. So this is what I think that it's the most important thing to provide a platform for dialogue and also a platform for international communication, development and connections. We as people, 
working for biosphere reserves or living in a biosphere reserve can easily look for other people that are facing the same problems that we are and try to tackle them together. Anyone who wants to share something from their experience or anything that was not understood? Um, Katrin? Mm -hmm. uh, I, um, because uh, Bulgarian Biodiversity Foundation passed recently the last five years, as you mentioned, the whole process of um, enlarging and uh, uh, make a modern biosphere reserve under the view strategy. Can you tell us more about the process? How did this process go in Bulgaria? Because this, I think, is some practical experience that can be used in other countries that also want to modernize their biosphere reserves. Yeah, so this is something that we've been talking a lot um, in the that I participated in last year because um, Parnon Biosphere Reserve in Greece, as I mentioned, it's a territory which um, is not yet a biosphere reserve. So they're currently into the development stage. And we were discussing a lot of different practical um, examples how to involve the local um, municipalities and the local people. And this is one of the most important things that we also did here in Bulgaria. We went around and talked with all local authorities for all those 17 biosphere reserves. And we tried to explain what are the benefits and what might be the potential problems associated with the, the, the um, declaration of the new biosphere reserves. And we tried to also explain the local people that um, biosphere reserves are not something that uh, UNESCO is creating uh, in order to, to help the, the local people. It is something which can be used as a tool from the local people, but it really depends on the, um, the region and the will of the, um, the local population and local authorities, how they will develop um, their own territory in the future. Uh, I believe that the main challenges that we faced were related first to the, um, the huge administrative work that we needed to do with regards to the nomination forms. Those are documents that are more than 100 pages usually and uh, need to provide detailed information about the process of engaging the local people, about the territory and a lot more. And uh, it really required a lot of uh, time and effort to get the information and be able to answer all the different questions and um, organize different meetings. Uh, talk to the people, engage them, have dialogue, and make them uh, believe in the fact that biosphere reserves can be something good for them. Because I honestly believe that there is nothing bad associated with territory becoming a biosphere reserves. There are only positives associated with them, with that, but they need to be used in the right manner. Uh, thank you. And uh, because you said it's a bottom-up approach, uh, that this is something that is recognized as something useful for the region, and this, uh, because of this understanding, local people or uh, initiatives, organizations start to um, build the process. Was, were there such interested parties in Bulgaria that actually were wanted to work with Bulgarian Biodiversity Foundation and they were pushing the process so that it's really a bottom-up approach. How do you consider what was the situation? So in some regions there were some organizations which were very active. They knew about the deadline that UNESCO gave to OBRs to transform and become uh, post civil biosphere reserves or new modern biosphere reserves and so they're really happy to see us and um, they used our help as, uh, as much as possible. And they were very active and they even come uh, to us asking, what do we do now? And this is actually something that we wanted to, um, to avoid. We wanted to, them to understand how to manage their territory by themselves. But I believe it's a process and we're still, still in the early stages. 
and um, we, I believe that um, with uh, more time and uh, people learning more about uh, the different opportunities and best practices, uh, they can uh, start coming up with their own ideas on how to, to further develop and how to come up with joint projects. And that's why I believe that the summer school that will be held in Bulgaria this year is a chance for local people to really embrace this concept and um, see that other people are using it in a better way and um, communicate it and start communicating it and start working and thinking about joint projects. I see another question here. It's important that more information about how good BRs are for both people and nature to be spread out more through media somehow, TV ads, short videos on Facebook and so on, so that white public really understands what they are indeed a good thing for everyone. In 2017, there was um, a huge event in Italy. It was the um, Map Youth Forum, where more than 300 people from a, a hundred and something countries participated. And uh, it was a five day event where all young people had to, the MAP program, what are the main problems that we think uh, that the program is facing? And this actually was one of the most heard and one of the most uh, common issue that all the young people identified that um, not enough uh, has been said and not enough has been communicated about the MAP program and about the PRs. And I'm happy to see that ever since the MAP um, Youth Forum finished, there is the Instagram page of uh, the MAP program, the UNESCO website, and they started using um, these different communication channels and talking a lot more about it. But I fully agree with you that a lot more has to be done and more people need to understand about the concept and, and why it's good for, for them and how they can benefit. Because you mentioned the uh, youth summer school uh, happening in Central Balkan Biosphere Reserve this year. Can you share something from the program? I know it's available on the link, but uh, can you share now with the people that uh, might be interested in participating some features of the program? And also, can you please uh, send in the yes. maybe the presentation itself, although it's recorded, and we will make it uh, available in the Facebook event. Maybe not everybody participating now in the webinar have also uh, joined into the Facebook event, so it will be useful to share it now in the chat room and whoever is interested can take it from there. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm now sharing the link to the Summer University, um, which, as I said, will be held in Bulgaria in July. Um, it's a very interactive um, event. It's a one-week event which will include a lot of site visits, lectures, and group work. It's a combination of all those three features. And the main idea is to um, come up with different ideas for future joint projects that are international and also local, and also uh, talk about uh, local products and the promotion of biosphere reserves. Those are our three key actions that we want to take out from um, the summer university we want to build upon on what was already done in the past four years and take it one step further we have already received more than 60 applications and we will only um, be able to accept around 30 to 35 so the competition looks like it's going to be tough but i still encourage you to apply if you think it will be useful and interesting for you and make sure you describe your motivation in um, great detail. Um, there will be some Greek professors. Uh, we are working in cooperation with um, a local organization in, in Greece. It's called um, Medies, um, which is um, short for the Mediterranean Information Office for Environment, Culture and Sustainable Development the UNESCO Chair and Network on Sustainable Development, Management and Education 
in the Mediterranean of the University of Athens will also be there, Professor Skoulos. We will have some lectures from uh, the UNESCO Venice office, some lectures from Bulgaria, and uh, some local farmers, uh, local businesses that we will go visit and, um, and talk about um, their path and why do they believe in the biosphere reserve concept. Any other comments, questions, or just something that you would like to share from your experience? Okay, well, yes, as, um, as we said already, I have questions related to ICC map UNESCO. Some BRs clearly didn't meet criteria. It was as well exit strategy as part of UNESCO map strategic one. Why they're not more strict and just move deadlines of tasks. That was also one of my thoughts. And I can say from the example of Bulgaria that the exit strategy, it was aiming at removing all those BRs which are not, uh, so to say, modern and uh, don't have a post-civil structure. And some of them in Bulgaria um, did not, managed to explain and did not manage to provide enough documents um, to comply with the new well, <clears throat> requirements by UNESCO, but um, our National Map Committee has decided and asked the Map ICC program to Map ICC Secretariat to give them an extension of the deadline so that they can prepare the documents. So I believe that this is what uh, might have happened in some other countries that they might have asked for an extension of the deadline so that they can prepare the documents. And judging by the example of Bulgaria, I can say that sometimes the local authorities don't have the time and don't recognize this as a priority. However, some of the local people find it important. So I personally think that it's important to have this opportunity to be given the the chance for more time to prepare the documents and your motivation why you should remain in the um, MAP program. And some of you maybe share if uh, if you knew about biosphere reserves and why why did you join this webinar? I would be curious to see if we don't have too many shy people. Are you working in one? Are you researching one, or why did you participate in the um, webinar? Okay, I guess we have. Yes, feel free to unmute yourself and um, share or not. Okay, well, we will um, make sure you uh, receive the, um, the presentation. If you can leave your emails, would that be okay, Dante? or how would be the best way to distribute the presentation? Uh, so that, uh, that's why I, uh, I told that you can share maybe into the chat room right now, the file itself. Okay. I'll because that. after that, we will also share it in the Facebook event, but maybe not all of you have um, signed in into the Facebook event. So it's better if you can also share it now so that we can download it like right now. <laughs> yes, perfect. I'm doing that now. It's a bit big, so it might take a while, but um... we will not end the meeting uh, mm -hmm. for some time so that you, you can download it. Okay, perfect. And I also have a 
question to all the participants, although you don't, probably you don't know each other and you don't feel uh, like talking, obviously, but have you visited some biosphere reserve and what are your, I don't know, impressions from it? I'm studying a master's degree in ecology and ecological management, and I'm a volunteer in many eco initiatives in Bulgaria. PRs are interesting for me from many points of view, but mainly because of the sustainable link they make between people and nature. Great, thank you. Yes, that was also my main reason why I'm interested in this topic, because uh, the the fact that you can see an example of a practical example of uh, sustainable development is something very, very important and it helps us as people who believe in this cause to better communicate it to the local people. So that's why every time I talk about biosphere research, I try to use as many examples of, as possible of different initiatives to, to help people better understand that it is possible and it requires um, collaborative work, but it is possible. So yeah, anyone has ever been to a biosphere reserve? What were your impressions? Or maybe you've been to one, but you don't know. And you may be able to find out now when you go to the map website. I have been to, uh, to the famous Rion biosphere reserve in Germany. And I was very much impressed because we met different stakeholders. Everybody really knew about the, the biosphere reserve, the status of the territory. We met uh, farmers with uh, cattle and uh, sheep, this Rion sheep. Um, we also uh, met a person. Just a moment. Excuse me. Okay, I see that the presentation was sent successfully. Can someone please confirm if that is true and if you're able to see it on the chat? Yes, it's okay, perfect. Okay, so feel free to download it and yes, have a look at it. There are some links there. I would kindly ask you not to distribute it too much, but uh, you can use some of the slides by mentioning our organization. You're welcome. Okay, great. So yeah, you can also follow the, the Facebook pages of um, the different organizations that are partnering in this project so that um, you can learn more about the upcoming webinars and we'll be happy to see you there again. Yes, you can share the recording in eco volunteers groups. Feel free to do it. And the videos that I shared, I think they're very uh, good in terms of uh, illustrating the concept. So I would also recommend that you use those. Okay, last chance for questions, comments, or just something. Okay, well, in this case, um, I guess we can close the webinar. Would that be okay, Zurnica? Yes, it's okay. Okay, well, thank you very much for your participation and for your time. Thank you very much, Katrin, for your presentation also. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much from my side too. Thank you, Katrin. Thank you. Okay, so as I said, we will leave the meeting, so feel free to, to stay until the presentation is downloaded. I will leave now and I'm going to wish you a great rest of the day and hopefully see you in some upcoming events related to biosphere reserves.